Spiritual development plays an important part in the making of a United States Marine. Lieutenant Brad D. Guillory, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, will deliver the graduation prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Let us, let us pray. Eternal Father, some people wander all their lives if they have made a difference. These Marines do not have that problem. We are intensely proud of each of them and their noble accomplishment. We are grateful for all those who have sacrificed to bring them to this day. As they go forth for flag and country, the Corps in glory, and for one another, send down your blessings upon them, O God, and upon all that they may come through any ordeal with dignity. Semper Fidelis. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Aye, aye, sir. The Commanding General, Marine Corps Recruit Depot San Diego, welcomes you to what is a historical event in the life of a Marine, their graduation from boot camp. Approximately 40 weeks each year for the past 100 years, new Marines have departed San Diego for service with units of the Marine Corps around the globe. The primary mission of the Recruit Depot is to provide basic training to recruits enlisted west of the Mississippi, which represents approximately 51% of all applicants in the Marine Corps each year. The Depot is also home to Recruiter School and Drill Instructor School. All of our efforts here are geared toward one end, producing America's finest fighting force, the United States Marine Corps. This morning, Company M, 3rd Recruit Training Battalion, Recruit Training Regiment, will form and march in the parade. Following the pass and review, the graduating Marines will return front and center of the reviewing stand for final dismissal. The staff for today's parade is comprised of Marines from the Recruit Training Regiment. The command of troops is Captain Nicholas A. Listro, and the parade adjutant is Captain Joel M. Dahlman. Marching units are now being called to attention, and the adjutant's command, sound adjutant's call, will begin today's parade. Marching in today's parade are 280 of the graduating Marines from Company M. Among the 280 Marines are two Marines who displayed outstanding performances in two individually graded events. By the first class, Miguel Mantacuno from Platoon 3,267 is the company high shooter, scoring a 336 out of 350. Private First Class, Sila R. Jones from Platoon 3,261 is the most physically fit Marine, scoring a 300 out of 300 on the physical fitness test and a 300 out of 300 on the combat fitness test. They will be receiving awards from the Marine Corps Association and Foundation. Present today is the company honor graduate recruiter, Sergeant Jordan T. Also present today. Platoon high shooting average for Platoon 3,260. Corporal Sebastian K. Kime. Recruit rudimentary individual field and combat skills and practice the personal and professional traits which distinguishes them as Marines. Examples of these traits are discipline. The achievement of self-control and self-awareness, which assures respect for authority, instant and willing obedience to orders, and the self-reliance to maintain or improve those traits which exemplify a Marine. Military bearing. 
consistently demonstrating military presence and personal awareness, as well as the proper wearing and maintenance of uniforms. Esprit de Corps, acquiring the common spirit of the Marine Corps that inspires enthusiasm, devotion, pride, initiative, teamwork, aggressiveness, determination, moral courage, integrity, camaraderie, and the burning desire to work with and for others towards excellence in common goals. For 248 years, Marines have fought and won whenever and wherever the nation calls. In the harshest conditions, over the most brutal terrain, and against the most formidable enemies, Marines defend the ideals of freedom with grit and tenacity. Although battlefields change and capabilities evolve, history proves that true victory comes from the individual Marine with steeled resolve, the drive to overcome any obstacle, and the warrior spirit to fight on against all odds. It takes that steadfast faithfulness, semper fidelis, to core, country, and each other that abounds throughout our storied legacy. Marines today remain in combat, forward deployed throughout the world, confronting every challenge with courage, loyalty, and faithfulness. They are resolved to be the most ready when the nation is least ready. To defend freedom anytime and anywhere. To stand ready to aid those devastated by natural disasters. To pay tribute to those who have forged our proud legacy. And to honor the families and loved ones who faithfully stand beside us. For the Marines of Company M, today marks the end of the 13-week recruit training cycle. They have marched countless miles at Camp Pendleton, as well as on this parade deck, and have been trained, as are all Marines, as basic riflemen. In addition, due to intensive physical training program, their strength and endurance have doubled since their arrival aboard the recruit deep. Platoons are now being aligned from left to right in order to get them into their exact positions for the parade. next portion of the ceremony will be our national anthem. We welcome veterans and members of the armed forces to join us in rendering appropriate honors with a military salute. For guests who have not served in the military, it is proper etiquette during the national anthem to place their right hands over their hearts and for those in the audience wearing headgear to remove it. Will the guests please rise for the presentation of the colors.
ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. <laughs> Be seated. At the, at the command, post the colors. The color guard moves into position within the parade. This signifies that the entirety of the parade has been formed and is ready to be presented to the command. command. Parade rest. The parade adjutant will give the command sound off, which signals the band to parade forward of the assembled marines while playing military marching music.
now presents the assembled command to the commander of troops. Command, Officer Center March. All unit commanders and guide on bearers march to the front and center of the formation. Historically, it was at this point that commanding officers would issue orders and instructions to the unit commanders. Following this, the unit leaders would face about, return to their units, and pass the information along to their Marines.
step, right? Face. Step, step, quarter, history. Millions of men and women have earned the title United States Marine. Many who have helped shape our history join us here today. In keeping with the tradition of once a Marine, always a Marine, we would like to recognize them. At this time, those in the audience who have served as Marines, please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for their dedicated service to Corps and country. Thank you. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the battalion commander for a third recruit training battalion, Lieutenant Colonel M. Matthew Phelps. Good morning, Good morning ladies and gentlemen, family, friends, distinguished guests. On behalf of the Commanding General of Marine Corps Recruit Depot San Diego in the Western Recruiting Region, Brigadier General James Ryans, and the Commanding Officer of the Recruit Training Regiment, Colonel Peter Rumler, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the graduation ceremony for Company M. It's also my distinct pleasure to welcome today's parade reviewing official, Colonel Benjamin Venning, Commanding Officer of the Assault Amphibian School, whose impressive biography you will hear shortly. Sir, we are honored to have you with us this morning. Now before I talk about the remarkable young people that you came to, came to see graduate, I'd like to acknowledge a few groups of people who made their success possible. First, let me recognize those impressive Marines you see wearing the distinctive green campaign covers. They are, of course, the legendary Marine Corps drill instructors. Drill instructors are the critical element in the transformation of civilians into United States Marines. From the very moment a recruit arrives here, a drill instructor is with them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, everywhere that they go. It takes a special Marine to be a drill instructor, and these Marines are extraordinary. Their impact is permanent. Let's face it, of the thousands of people we meet in our lives, few will leave a lasting impression. But no Marine will ever forget the name, the face, or that gentle, loving voice of their drill instructor. Seated next to the reviewing stand is another special group of people. These are the families of the officers and drill instructors of my company. These families know firsthand the time, dedication, and sacrifice that it takes to make a Marine. They assume additional roles and responsibilities at home so that their Marines can be here focused on the mission. We couldn't do this without their love and support, so please give a round of applause for the families of my company. Every one of these young people's journey began with one of the hard-working Marine Corps recruiters who canvassed this nation on their mission to enlist the next generation of Marines. Today, Marine Corps Recruiting Command is represented by Staff Sergeant Jordan Greenlaw of Recruiting Substation Austin, Texas. Staff Sergeant Greenlaw recruited our company honor graduate, Private First Class Sela Jones. It was Staff Sergeant Greenlaw who first recognized PFC Jones's potential and offered her the opportunity to become a Marine. Staff Sergeant, outstanding job. Thanks for being here this morning. And finally, while most of recruit training happens here in San Diego, recruits spend several weeks up with the talented instructors at Camp Pendleton on Edson Range, the talented instructors of Weapons and Field Training Battalion. There they learn essential field and combat skills including marksmanship training, where they learn to engage targets with precision rifle fire at staggering distances, up to 500 yards out. Today, Weapons and Field Training Battalion is represented by Corporal Sebastian Hine, who is the primary marksmanship instructor for our platoon with the highest shooting average. Corporal, thanks for being here this morning. Now let me talk about these incredible young people. They are truly some of the best this nation has to offer. When they arrived, they were young and fit, 18 years old on average, and in better shape than most people their age. 
All of, them All of them had graduated from high school, and 14 of them had already earned college degrees. Beyond that, they demonstrated a courage and commitment that few of their peers could muster when they raised their right hand and swore a solemn oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. They come from every corner of the globe, in this case, three different countries, including Colombia, Tanzania, West Africa, and some came from right across the street here in San Diego. But wherever they came from, it was a common goal that brought them together, the goal of becoming United States Marines. Three months ago, these young people embarked on the world's most demanding entry-level training program when they stepped off the buses and onto our historic yellow footprints. Since then, they have undoubtedly been tested. They've been trained and evaluated in the attributes that make Marines unique in the world. We've trained them in battlefield-tested warfighting skills, so when their nation calls, they'll be ready for the fight. We've hardened them by developing their physical and mental toughness so that they'll never quit or give up against any odds. We've indoctrinated them in our core values of honor, courage, and commitment so that they'll be Marines of exemplary character in peace or at war. And finally, we've instilled in them a bias for intelligent action so that as small unit leaders, they'll be able to decide, act, and communicate in the future operating environments, in any climate place. I hope when you're reunited with your Marine, you notice a few changes. They should stand a little taller, look a little leaner. They'll look you in the eye, and they'll use strange phrases like, yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. You won't have to tell them to clean up after themselves or finish a meal, and I promise you, each one of them knows how to make their beds. Behind those things is what I'm most proud of. Through their courage in coming here, through blood, sweat, and tears, through physical, mental, emotional, and character transformation, they have fully committed themselves to serving our Corps, and I am honored to stand alongside them. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to present to you this morning 280 young people who can now and forever claim the title United States Marine. Now I'll ask you to excuse me for a moment while I address the company one last time. Good morning, Marines! Did you hear that? That's pure pride. Now my company, I know when you got here a few months ago, the furthest thing from your mind was graduation, but here you stand today, having accomplished something that most, most young people would, ever, would never even attempt. Back in those days, you were probably thinking, why in the world, what in the world have I gotten myself into, and how do I get them to stop yelling at me? But here you are anyway. When you get home this weekend on your well-deserved leave, people will look up to you. They'll be proud of you, as they should be. They'll be impressed and amazed at your transformation. Your friends will ask you how you did it. And when they ask you, I want you to take them for a walk. Right on down to your recruiter's office, because I know your drill instructors would like to meet your friends. Remember that the strength of our Corps doesn't come from any weapon system or piece of equipment, but from the warfighting spirit of individual Marines working together as a team. War is a violent conflict of wills. And so it is your will, your spirit, that matters the most. The world is a dangerous and chaotic place, and that's why we have you. The legacy of our core of being first to fight and never giving up now rests with you for safekeeping. The Eagle Globe and Anchor that we handed you atop the Reaper as you finished the Crucible represents that legacy. And for a long, as long as you wear it, you represent the entire history of our core and every Marine who came before you. Be proud of yourselves. Be proud of what you've accomplished. As you go forward in your lives and your careers, be worthy of the title you've earned. On behalf of all the officers, drill instructors, and the support personnel here at Marine Corps Recruit Depot San Diego, let me be the first to wish you fair winds and following seas. Congratulations, Marines, and welcome to our Corps.
Now taking their position in the reviewing area is today's parade reviewing official, Colonel Benjamin M. Benny, Commanding Officer, Assault Amphibian School, Training and Education Command. He is accompanied by Colonel Peter M. Rumler, Commanding Officer, Recruit Training Regiment, Mowbray Cobra Recruit Depot, San Diego. Colonel Benning graduating from Virginia Military Institute and was commissioned via the Officer Candidates course in 1996. A career assault amphibian officer, he operated and commanded at every level in the AAV community from platoon commander to serving as commanding officer of Assault Amphibian School Battalion Training and Education Command. He has served in a variety of challenging billets in numerous commands to include AAV Platoon Commander, 22nd Marine Expeditionary Unit from 1998 to 2000. Staff Platoon Commander, the basic school until 2003. Commandant of the Marine Corps Legislative Fellowship, Legislative Fellow for the Assistant Majority Leader in the United States Senate. Deputy Director, Marine Corps Senate Liaison Office from January of 2007 to January of 2009. Inspector Instructor, 4th Assault Amphibian Battalion, from February of 2009 to May of 2011. Operations Officer, Marine Corps Force Integration Office. Senior Military Evaluator, Office of the Secretary of Defense, Operational Testing and Evaluation Directorate. Colonel Venning currently serves as the Commanding Officer, Assault Amphibian School. Colonel Venning is a graduate of the Basic School, the Assault Amphibian Officer Course, the Amphibious Warfare School, the Armor Captain's Career Course, the United States Marine Corps Legislative Fellowship Program, the Joint Interagency Multinational Planner Course, the Joint Forces Staff College, the Command and Staff College Distance Education Command, and the Commander's Course. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Colonel Benjamin M. Venning. In review is a tradition within all military units, allowing the unit commander to formally inspect the unit under their charge. years, more than a million Marines have crossed this parade deck and have deployed into conflicts around the world where Marines have earned their trust and dependability. Places such as Guadalcanal, where Marines worked with United States soldiers to win the first offensive victory during World War II. Iwo Jima, where uncommon valor was a common virtue and Marines rose the national flag on top of Mount Sarabachi. Inchon, 
where Marines assaulted three beaches simultaneously and seized the entire island within four days. Grenada, where military members were part of Operation Urgent Fury to help stabilize a local government. Kuwait, where Marines were a part of Operation Desert Shield and Operation Desert Storm and fought to liberate the city from Iraqi forces. Fallujah, where Marines surrounded the city within 24 hours to commence Operation Vigilant Resolve and take back the city from Al-Qaeda forces. Marja, where Marines worked with Afghan, British, Canadian, Danish, and Estonian forces in order to remove Taliban forces from the last stronghold in the Helmand province. Even now, Marines are stationed worldwide to answer the call when they are needed. This parade deck is rich in history and tradition, and no Marine trained here ever forgets its sights and sounds. Ladies and gentlemen, as the national flag passes directly in front of you, please rise. Once it passes, you may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commander of Troops, Captain Nicholas A. Listro, and the Regimental Staff. Third Marine Aircraft Wing Band, Miramar, California. Series 3,261, Series Commander Captain Nicole A. Taverner, and Platoon 3,261, Senior Drill Instructor Staff Sergeant Destiny M. Dempsey. Platoon 3,262, Senior Drill Instructor Staff Sergeant Jake S. Duenas. Platoon 3,263, Senior Drill Instructor, Gunnery Sergeant Jacob F. Sotelo. The Regimental Color Guard is led on the march by the Regimental Color Sergeant, Drill Instructor, Sergeant Emmanuel J. Just. Series 3,265, Series Commander, First Lieutenant Matthew E. Michael. 
Platoon 3,265, Senior Drill Instructor, Staff Sergeant Jesse J. Guerrero. Platoon 3266, Senior Drill Instructor Staff Sergeant William G. McCoy III. Platoon 3267, Senior Drill Instructor Staff Sergeant Rudy A. Dominguez Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, if you turn to page 21 of your graduation pamphlets, you will find the Marines Hymn. The Marines Hymn has a history dating back to 1859 and has a long-standing tradition for Marines to face the direction of the music and stand at attention when it is heard. It is now directed that all Marines present and who have served honorably, and ladies and gentlemen, you're all encouraged to join. Sing the words to the first verse as Marine Band San Diego performs Anchors Away, followed by the Marines Hymn. Will the guests please rise? seated. Marine Corps' uniqueness and strength as an elite fighting force is directly attributable to the magnificent efforts of the drill instructors and company officers who train and supervise the recruits. The distinct qualities of spirit and discipline, the heart and soul of every Marine, have been developed, nurtured, and ingrained in recruits through their observance and relationship with their drill instructors and officers. Recruit training is the very foundation of the Corps. Each year, recruit training provides thousands of America's finest young men and women with the basic knowledge and skills to function in a profession characterized by its own set of high values and tough standards. The most important thing we do in the Marine Corps is make Marines. The individual Marine is the Corps. That is what we do here. For the Marines graduating today, the long, arduous journey of the last 13 weeks is but a small step into the future of the Marine Corps. As they prepare to fill the ranks of our Corps, they do so with unquestionable support for the high ideals and standards of the United States of America and the United States Marine Corps. Although Company M prepares for their final dismissal from boot camp, their initial training is not over. Soon after graduation, they will report to the School of Infantry, Camp Pendleton, California, where they will continue to be trained to serve as an effective member of a Marine Rifle Squad.
Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would like to introduce to you the Marines responsible for ensuring the success of the difficult transition required to become a Marine. The company commander is Captain Nicholas A. Listro. The company first sergeant is Gunnery Sergeant Grace S. Gomez. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for the staff of my company. The next portion of the ceremony will be the traditional function of retiring the guide odds. The guide odds have been carried by the platoons throughout recruit training and are being retired to symbolize the disbanding of platoons. All similar units in the Marine Corps carry such guidons, which identify the unit and are a source of pride to each individual member. Note that the honor of carrying these guidons is bestowed upon those Marines who displayed outstanding leadership qualities, motivation, and character, and were selected as the platoon honor graduates. The platoon honor graduates compete for the titles of series and company honor graduate. They are considered the top Marines graduating today and have demonstrated the highest potential for future leadership and responsibility in the Marine Corps. Guidons will now be returned to the drill instructors. Honor graduates will now be presented a plaque by the battalion commander, Lieutenant Colonel M. Matthew Fabs, and the battalion Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major Gerardo E. Trevino. Ladies and gentlemen, please hold your. Graduate for platoon 3261, and the company honor graduate is Private First Class Sela R. Jones from Wimberley, Texas. Private First Class Jones is also the recipient of the Chesty Puller Award for her outstanding meritorious performance while in recruit training. The honor graduate for platoon 3262 is Private First Class Aiden B. Kelly from San Antonio, Texas. The, 
The honor graduate for platoon 3,263 is private first class, Reginald R. Williams Jr. from Crandall, Texas. The honor graduate for platoon 3,265 is private first class, Anthony F. Vasquez from Fresno, California. The honor graduate for platoon 3,266 is Private First Class Ryland B. Elliott from Boise, Idaho. And the honor graduate for platoon 3,267 and the series honor graduate is Private First Class Cole E. Hinton from Morrill, Kansas. Ladies and gentlemen, the honor graduates of Bike Company. The company first sergeant will now give the command. Sergeant will now give the command. Senior drill instructors to dismiss their platoons. Needless to say, this will be the most welcome command they have received throughout recruit training. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony.